Ferdinand's Ice Cream Shop. Located at the heart of Washington State University, it is renowned for its old-fashioned ice cream and cougar gold cheese. But what many people may not know is that the milk used in the making of the ice cream and the cheese comes from WSU's very own dairy. The Knott Dairy Center also provides a working research lab for Washington State University students to study animal health and nutrition. The dairy typically milks up to 180 cows per day with all of the milk going straight to the WSU Creamery. WCU Animal Sciences major Kevin Gavin begins the milking process by installing a filter to a receiver jar. This is our receiver jar. Milk comes in from the cows through these two lines, enters the receiver jar. When the receiver jar fills up, the milk is then transported down to the tank downstairs. The milk tank is then readied by removing the washing hose. Next, the cleaning solution is prepared for washing the tank after the milk is picked up the next day. Once the tank has been set up to receive the milk, the milking stations are prepared to milk the cows. These machines are currently in the clean in place position. That means they've been stowed after the last milking and have been cleaned and are ready for use. So I need to pull the uh, covers off of the machine, pull the machine off of its mount, hook it up to the chain and then pull the chain up. The machine is now ready to be milked. Wires are set up that direct the cows into the holding pen where they must patiently wait their turn. Once five cows are positioned on each side of the parlor, the milking machines and back flush is turned on. The back flush runs water and sanitizer through the machines in between cows to reduce pathogen transmission. The cows are now ready to be milked. Okay, first to milk a cow, we dip their teeth with an iodine solution called a pre-dip to kill the bacteria that's on their teats. We will then wait 30 seconds and then after 30 seconds we will strip her teats. So we just pull a few streams of milk out to make sure that it's normal. This is a good way to detect mastitis, which is inflammation of the udder. This cow looks good. So then we're going to wipe her with a clean towel. Wipe each teat off individually. The key to making high quality milk is to milk only clean, dry teats. So we have this cow's teats cleaned and dried. Now we'll attach the milking machine. We want the machine to be level so it milks her out well. We want the bottom of the machine to be level with the floor of her udder, just like this. And now she'll milk out. Each cow usually takes six to eight minutes to milk, averaging about 45 pounds per milking and 90 pounds in one day. Once the cows are done being milked, the pump releases itself from the teat. The steps are then repeated until a total of 35 cows are milked. A tanker driver is then responsible for transferring the milk from the Knott Dairy Center to the WSU Creamery for pasteurization. The tanker driver leaves the creamery every day at 4.30 a.m. to collect the milk. WCU Agricultural Food Systems major, Matthew Paul, describes the process of transferring the milk. First thing I do is check the amount of milk. So I make a stick reading and from that I can tell how much milk is in the tank. A chart is then used to convert the level of milk from centimeters to pounds. From there I check the temperature. And after that, I take four separate samples that will be analyzed later back at the lab. A hose from the truck is then attached to the milk tank to begin pumping. Once the milk is done pumping, the hose is removed. The tank is then rinsed out while allowing the excess milk to drain in order to prepare it for the cleaning solution. The tanker driver then returns to the WSU Creamery to begin the pasteurization process. 
Before the milk is pumped from the truck, more samples are taken to run a series of tests in the lab. The tests guarantee that the milk is consumer friendly. The milk is tested for antibiotics, acidity levels, water content, and fat and protein content. After the lab tests are done, the first step in the pasteurization process is to turn on the boiler. This is the boiler. It's going to give us steam throughout the whole plant so we can pasteurize milk. Creamery operator John Rohner has the pasteurization process down to a T. And to legally pasteurize raw milk, you need two things, temperature and time. You have to put the proper amount of temperature in the milk and hold it for the proper amount of time. The device that our student pasteurizers are using on the floor of, at WSU Creamery is an HTST pasteurizer, which is an acronym for high temperature, short time. Once the pasteurizer is turned on, temperature recording charts are installed. The machine is checked to ensure that all the legal requirements are met. The pipes are then ready for the milk to be pumped to the pasteurization machine. However, the pasteurizer must first be stabilized on water. The pasteurizer uses the water to make sure the temperatures meet legal requirements. Then it is ready for the milk. The milk fills the pasteurization machine, flushing out the excess water. A predetermined amount of cream is added as specified by the lab test to ensure that the milk is consistent of taste and fat content. During the pasteurization process, the temperature of the milk must be meticulously monitored to ensure that it does not run over 165 degrees Fahrenheit. When the legal required temperature is not met, uh, it goes into cut out or divert, which means the flow is not allowed to go forward, but diverted back to the balance tank so it can go through the heater again. When the legally pasteurized milk then will leave the pasteurizer and follow some pipes over to the cheese vat and enters the cheese vat and begins to fill it up. At prescribed times following the recipe, the cheese maker then will add the flavor culture and the lactic acid culture and to begin the process of growing that in the milk. The milk is now ready for the cheese making process to begin, as well as sent off for the making of other dairy products. The result? Delicious Ferdinand's confections like ghost pepper aged cougar gold and a variety of other flavored cheeses. And of course, there's the ice cream, with an array of unique flavors for all to enjoy. It's great ice cream, it is so nice and rich. The Ferdinand ice cream is really unique and it's fun having the different flavors for different times of the year that are specialty flavors. And remember, all the unique flavors of ice cream and cheese that Ferdinand's has to offer share the same beginning.